I was in the Army, and when I got out, I was corporal. And then I went back as a contractor for uh, the Department of the Army. Uh, my original purpose was uh, definitely get involved, serve my country, and then uh, pursue it from that point forward. I personally was, was, uh, had been deployed to Iraq for uh, just about a year, and uh, having gone back to Europe, I was uh, having trouble sleeping and um, having some issues just adjusting back to this you know, different lifestyle after having been shot at and nearly blown to pieces you know, so many times to this, now I can get, just go down the road and get a pizza. Um, and uh, one of my officers recommended I go see a psychiatrist. Yeah, within 10 minutes it was, so you're uh, probably bipolar, uh, most likely ADD and uh, PTSD. The visible effects of combat stress have been mentioned by ancient writers like Homer and Herodotus. The French called it mal de pays. The Germans, Heimweh. In Spain, it was estar roto. Whatever they've called it, centuries of militaries have acknowledged that sometimes the horrors of war can be too much for soldiers to bear. It used to be considered a nervous reaction, an expected part of combat. But psychiatrists today label it a brain dysfunction, which began life in 1980 as post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. This war isn't any different than any other than guys coming back with shell shock, um, battle fatigue or combat fatigue, and, and you know now they're calling it post-traumatic stress disorder. It's, it's been around forever. And like their other disorders, it wasn't found through scientific testing. It was lobbied for by psychiatrists and voted into Psychiatry's Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. Literally voted in. Today, it's military psychiatry's most popular diagnosis and it spread rapidly into the civilian world. The goal is to combat post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. Helping veterans with PTSD. A soldiers post-traumatic stress disorder. I was diagnosed with PTSD. 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 How many times do you hear PTSD in the media now? Uh, people really don't understand it, I don't think, and we're just trying to assign a label uh, to people, uh, our soldiers and sailors that are coming back from these very horrific events that they're being witness to. People who suffer from post-traumatic stress are reacting to a traumatic event in a normal fashion. What we believe is that the military is treating veterans in particular with post-traumatic stress as though they have a mental illness. We don't believe they have a mental illness. We believe that they're wounded and what they need is healing. And PTSD psychiatry has created a disease, they speak of it as a disease just as they speak of generalized anxiety disorder and clinical depression as diseases, but none of them are actual diseases. If someone shows up in my practice and they say a psychiatrist or other doctor diagnosed me uh, with post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, I would actually ask the patient, well, okay, what tests were done to establish that diagnosis? And they'll think about it and they'll realize that nothing was done. Uh, they just got the opinion of whoever the practitioner uh, was. Certainly there is stress that co goes along with combat. Um, when you put a soldier into an environment where he's not getting sleep, he's being shot at, um, friends around him are getting hurt or dying, that's going to cause some bad side effects. Sure, those, those phenomena exist, but that doesn't then equate to, well, let's drug him. There's nothing fake about the horrors of combat stress, but for psychiatry to invent a medical sounding brain dysfunction to convince you to accept their supposed treatment, and then they continue to expand its definition wider and wider. What qualifies for PTSD as recently been uh, downgraded, but uh, they have directives that come out that say, well, now we're going to suggest that everybody who's, you know, been in the war zone could possibly, maybe, and so with that, anybody qualifies. What I saw with the new um, privates coming in is they were just out of basic training 
and they were given psych drugs for PTSD, for being in basic training for nine weeks. I was diagnosed uh, with PTSD because I came back and I was a little jittery um, and it's just, I guess they said that I had PTSD from that when it was just I was still kind of trying to assimilate back into the scene of not being in combat, of not being over. The determination that I had PTSD was almost made before I even walked into the office. They told me that it was clear that I had post-traumatic stress disorder and that I needed medication to fix it. Nearly every soldier in my company was diagnosed with PTSD. Nearly every soldier. There are 175 different symptom combinations a psychiatrist can use to diagnose you with PTSD. No surprise then that 37% of recent war veterans are being treated for it. Once labeled, 80% will be given psychiatric drugs. And of those vets drugged, 89% are put on antidepressants and 34% powerful antipsychotics. Even after one of the world's top PTSD psychiatrists did a study admitting that antipsychotics don't work. That just because a medication can be widely prescribed doesn't mean necessarily that it's really helpful for the overall for the symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. If psychiatrists bother to do standard medical testing, there's a chance they might find something physically wrong. Something that they would label PTSD, but is actual physical damage that can be verified with a brain scan. It's called traumatic brain injury, or TBI. And it's estimated that 320,000 soldiers have suffered from it. Traumatic brain injury is a, it's an injury to the brain itself, either caused by a concussive blast or a closed head wound. There's some difficulty determining between traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress because the symptoms tend to mirror each other. An inability to focus, short-term memory loss, um, difficulty with rage or anger. You're talking about a physical injury, an actual brain injury, as opposed to a mental health, a condition. You know, it's the two absolutely, totally separate things. I'm handling a golf vet who's got traumatic brain injuries. He's labeled with PTSD. Um, and he's got a lump of shrapnel in his head, you know? So, hang on, you don't get lumps of shrapnel flying into your head and embedding in your skull do not leave you with no effect on the brain. The brain's going to take a real hammering from that sort of thing. Of course, most psychiatrists aren't going to spot TBI because they don't check for it. Instead, while the real problem escalates, they'll mask it all with medication which can make things far, far worse.